Hello everyone and welcome to another installment of Fantastic Five. This week we're counting down the five best action and adventure daily newspaper strips of all time. Although these days newspaper comics, when they're thought of at all, are most associated with a gag-a-day humor strips, for much of the 20th century, the pages of the newspaper funny section were packed with a number of genres, from fantasy to soap opera to the most popular of all, ongoing adventure strips. This list counts down five of the best. Here's a few excellent and highly influential strips that didn't quite crack the top five. The Phantom by Lee Falk, Prince Valiant by Hal Foster, Flash Gordon by Alex Raymond, The Spirit by Will Eisner, and Tintin by Air J. The latter two might have made it if they weren't more associated with comic books than strips these days. Now on to the top five. Number five, Dick Tracy. Debuting in 1931, Dick Tracy was created, written, and drawn by Chester Gould until 1977. Inspired by Prohibition-era crime and violence, Gould decided to create a police hero whose straight-laced, eye-for-an-eye approach to justice led to some memorable scenes that might be shocking even today. Using his iconic two-way wrist radio, Dick Tracy battled colorful and memorable villains such as Flat Top, Prune Face, and Big Boy, using forensic techniques that presaged later popular TV crime procedurals like Law & Order and CSI. By the end of Gould's tenure, elements of science fiction had been added, with Tracy getting a space-traveling police car and meeting the Princess of the Moon. Many fans today might best know Dick Tracy from the 1990 big screen adaptation, which captured much of the look of the strip in its set design and makeup effects, but missed out on a lot of the heart of the strip. Number 4, Little Orphan Annie. Speaking of comics better known today through adaptations, Harold Gray's 1924 creation is perhaps more famous these days for the 1977 musical that was then adapted as a major motion picture in 1982 and again in 2014. But in its heyday, the Little Orphan Annie comic strip was one of the biggest things around. Starring the titular orphan and her dog Sandy, who got adopted by cajillionaire Daddy Warbucks, the comic features the plucky redhead wandering the country and helping struggling people with courage and conviction. While modern readers may balk a little at Gray's somewhat right-wing, pro-big business approach to the stories, there is no denying the adventures, pathos, and humor of Gray's writing, or the appeal of his bold, simple graphic approach to illustration. Number 3, Wash Tubs and Captain Easy. Wash Tubs was created by Roy Crane in 1924 and drawn by him until 1943, though the strip continued without Crane until 1988. The strip was originally a gag-a-day strip about young Tubbs, who ran a general store in the Midwest, but after a few months, Tubb left the store to join the circus, and soon the first real adventure strip in comics was born. Over time, the strip focused even more on adventure as the girl Crazy Tubbs got edged out of his own strip by supporting character Captain Easy, a tough but taciturn gentleman adventurer. The stories of Wash Tubbs and Captain Easy are fun and exciting, but it is Crane's art that makes the strip most memorable, with a forceful pen line and judicious application of black areas to create vivid and realistic backgrounds. Number 2, Scorchy Smith. Scorchy Smith was created in 1930 by John Terry, but likely the only reason people still talk about the strip today is because of the period from 1933 to 1936 in which the strip was drawn by Noel Sickles. Sickles took over for Terry after Terry died of tuberculosis, and under his deft pen, Scorchy Smith soon became the most popular strip at its syndicate. The titular Scorchy was a freckle-faced pilot for hire who, together with his German sidekick Heine Himmelstoss and the sharp-tongued Mickey Lafarge, engaged in high-flying adventures full of spectacle and thrills. Sickles' art style, using cinematic compositions and impressionistic backgrounds, would go on to inspire an entire new school of comic strip artists, including his friend and studio mate, Milk Caniff. Speaking of whom... At number one, Terry and the Pirates. Milton Caniff debuted Terry and the Pirates in 1934 after a successful run on a children's adventure strip called Dickie Dare. This new strip starred a young boy named Terry Lee, who together with his older friend, action journalist Pat Ryan, encounter a group of pirates led by the deadly Dragon Lady while seeking out a lost gold mine in China. Over time, Terry grew and matured, and by World War II, Terry had joined the Air Force, and the strip began to focus more on his aerial exploits as a pilot and his new mentor, flight instructor Colonel Flip Corkin. Although Caniff would leave his own strip in 1946 and go on to create the almost equally beloved strip Steve Canyon, it was his work on Terry, including the occasional collaboration with Noel Sickles, that led to Caniff receiving the first ever Cartoonist of the Year award, 
from the National Cartoonist Society. That's all for this week. Join us again next week when we say five more things and you get mad because some of them came out before you were born. Thanks for watching this episode of Fantastic Fives. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to Comics Alliance for more comic facts, and check out ComicsAlliance.com for more comic awesomeness.